Huh. Another day, another box. Or in this case, unboxing. What are we unboxing today? Well, today it's me, Elric Ferris, your host here on motherboards.org, and we're going to check out a board from ASRock. Today we're going to look at the X79 Extreme 4. This is one of their midline motherboards. They actually have one above it and one below, so this is pretty much their midline board. Let's jump right in and see what's in this box. Here's the front of the box, ASRock X79 Extreme 4. So it features PCI 3.0, extreme fast RAM, fully optimized memory usage. The chipset's obviously the X79. This board is the LGA 2011 that uses all of the new Intel processors, 3960, 3930, others. Let's bounce around real quick to show you guys the back of the box. You guys can see all that. So now let's actually get inside and see what's actually in the box. So, I'll start off. This is all kind of messy in here, so I'm going to go ahead and just move the box off the side, and I'll take the stuff out one by one and show it to you. First of all, we've got the X79 Extreme 4 Quick Installation Guide. Then we have the ASRock Installation CD. You can see it says X79-10 on there. Something interesting. We have a little notice. If you want to install Windows 7, on Intel SATA 2 and SATA 3 ports with RAID function, please follow the below steps. So, I guess you got to follow these steps if you want to use those. Probably a good thing to do. That way you don't go, hey, why is my Windows not installing? We got two. I think it's all of them. Two SATA cables. Then we have something in this nice big shiny silver package right here. I'll go ahead and open that up. Probably going to be either the SLI or Crossfire Bridge, most likely. Maybe something else. Oh, that's what it is. This is your three-way SLI bridge right here. Go ahead and set that down. Always an important thing to have if you plan on doing something that crazy. Then we have the X79 software setup guide. They're going to tell you how to use your software. That's probably pretty cool. If they got something different going on, it's always good to know. Got the rear I.O. This thing is completely color coordinated. Tells you what's going on. Your clear CMOS. Got two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports there, another two here. Your LAN's going to be up here. Four more ports right there, and then you're going to have your audio right here. We'll see that when we actually check out the board. So that's pretty much all of the accessories package. If you're looking over, this would be on the content part of motherboards.org. Let's bounce out of this and check out the motherboard itself. All right, so here's the motherboard. And actually, hidden under the motherboard was the standard two-card SLI bridge. You guys saw the three-card one earlier. So let's get this out of the way and actually take the motherboard out and see what it's got to offer us. Wow. I mean, I got to say, folks, just from looks alone, take a look at this. Looks in damn fine here. It's looking all black and gold and stuff. Looks like somebody's car components. Starting off here at the top, we're going to see we have a single 8-pin power connector here. Some of the boards actually have them on both sides. This one just has one here. Then we're going to move over. You can see that everything with the MOSFETs and everything is completely covered. They have their nice little cooling solution. Also on the other side, you see we have two more sets of memory right here. This is quad channel memory. Moving over, we have the 24-pin power connector here. We have a fan connector that's up here on the top as well. And what's really cool I like about this is just look at all the components on here are all gold capacitors. I mean, I just think that looks really, really neat. Over here, we have another fan connector. Then we have a header right here for the USB 3.0. I've heard you guys complain sometimes about cases coming with this in the case. I don't know why you worry about it because you could want to use that thing. You just plug it directly in here. I kind of like having that feature. Right here, you can see we have an external controller right here. This will either be based on the Intel or AS Media controller. I'll look more on that when we do the full review. Then we're going to come back over here. You can see we have one, two, three PCIe 16X slots. Then we have one, two of the PCIe 1X slots. And then the standard PCIe slots, we have one, two. So quite a bit of expandability there. Down here at the bottom, you can see we have more expansion right here for putting external USB and stuff. Here we have the LED indicator. You're going to get a bunch of different message codes here. If your motherboard has an error or whatever, it's going to show you a code. You look up in the manual, it'll tell you what it is. Here we see down here for cooling, they actually have an active fan, not a passive. Up here on the top, we saw they had a passive cooling solution, but this is an actually an active cooling solution. The only problem with these is sometimes these little fans break or they make noise. That's really the only drawback. 
we have a reset and start button right here. I'll go ahead and just take the motherboard out right now out of its protective housing. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. For your SATA controllers, you have two types of controllers. You have the Intel native X79 and you also have the AS Media on here. The black ones are the Intel and the gray is the AS Media. Lastly, let's flip around and show you guys their I.O. First, I'll just let you guys see a full on shot of the board. Cameron, if you can indulge me. I'm going to flip it around, show you the back. Then let's move on and let's take a look at the rear I.O. Right off the bat, we can see that we have your standard legacy keyboard and mouse port. We also have the clear CMOS button right here. This is pretty cool if you're doing overclocking and stuff and it's not starting, you just clear it up real quick. You have both SPDIF and coaxial for your digital audio. You have two USB 3.0 ports and you have two, four, six of your standard USB 2.0 ports. You also have a single Firewire port and a single eSATA port here as well. Last but not least, you have your RJ45 for your LAN. And finally, for your analog audio, you have all the controllers here. Most motherboards these days are automatic plug. No matter which plug you plug in, you should be able to just choose it and it'll get your speakers up and going. So that's pretty much it. Today, folks, this motherboard has a lot of their own features, just like Asus and all the others. When I do the full review, we'll get into those. For now, you just saw the unboxing of the new ASRock X79 Extreme 4 motherboard here on motherboards.org.